What's going on guys? And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I went from this 140 pound skinny little boy to this 220 pound dude that I am now. This all happened naturally over the course of eight years where I can now broad jump 10.5, vert 38 inches, deadlift 650 pounds, clean 365 pounds, and throw in the mid 90s. I'm a massive believer that you can achieve anything you want in this life physically. And I'm going to show you my four phase plan to do exactly that today. So here's the journey you must go on to make everyone confused on how the hell you did it. But first we got to start from the beginning so I can paint a perfect picture of exactly how and why I did what I did. So at 16 years old, I got cut from my JV baseball team throwing 75 miles an hour, super skinny, had really no power output, no strength whatsoever, could barely deadlift 95 pounds. And I knew I had to make a change if I wanted to seek elite performance, which seemed absolutely asinine at the time, but I always believed it. I always wanted to achieve these goals, but I had no idea how to get there. I didn't have anyone to listen to that's been through it. So that's why I'm going to show you everything I did so it can be super simple for anyone wanting to change their life. So the first phase for everyone, which I consider phase one, is going to be hypertrophy and bulking. I knew it was time to put on some serious lean muscle mass, so this was my main focus for one to two years of my life. I stuck in the 8 to 12 rep range for accessories and stuck with 5 by 5s on all compound lifts. This part is absolutely crucial because your initial gains in life will carry you on to so much success later on in the future. And as these days went by and by, I could see myself continuing to grow and continuing to see that, damn, I actually can make this happen. I became super obsessed with the process. As you guys can tell, I'm just super obsessed with everything I do and I'm absolutely obsessed with human performance and staying as dialed as humanly possible. Over the last eight years, I haven't missed a single training session and I need to tell you guys that you cannot luck your way into this. But for all this hypertrophy work to work, we needed to bulk. We needed to go into caloric surplus and be super locked in and make sure that we're always in a caloric surplus and tracking absolutely everything. It's easy to say, oh, I'm eating a lot, I'm eating a lot, I just can't grow, I don't know what to do, I have a fast metabolism. Well, eat more, because the more you eat, the more you're gonna grow. If you have the fastest metabolism in the world, okay, then eat more calories. Eat peanut butter and jellies at the beginning. I don't care if it's not the most healthy thing in the world, you're going to get a lot of success early on by eating peanut butter and jellies, eating eggs, eating things that are cheaper if you can't afford steaks, bison, etc. Diet is absolutely everything and why so many people don't make gains. They go in for a month, they hit the gym hard, but they can't see any results. It's a goddamn shame, but it's because their diet wasn't locked in. So download my fitness pal, plug in your goals, if you want to gain weight, it's going to give you the exact macros that you want to hit, carbs, fats, and proteins, and the exact calories you have. And on days where you're training hard, you're going to bump up those calories a little higher. And in days where you have less intensity, you're going to bump those calories a little, a little lower. Just because this is going to allow you to gain lean muscle. We don't want you eating the same amount of calories every single day of the week. Just because days where you don't train, you're burning way less calories. And for me, I recommend following the vertical diet. I didn't find this diet until I was a little bit later in my journey, but if you can start off immediately, this is going to be huge. This is a diet by Stan Efforting, which prioritizes low FODMAP foods, which are less inflammatory and designed to grow muscle and help you with performance. This contains foods like bison, steak, chicken, salmon, eggs, rice, potatoes, spinach, carrots, and Greek yogurt. If you eat these all the time, you are going to turn into an absolute animal and you're gonna have a lot less stomach problems. Also, you need to find a good protein powder. I go with Transparent Labs grass-fed whey isolate, which has three to four ingredients and it doesn't have all these crappy ingredients like maltodextrin, xanthan gum, cellulose gum, red 40, the list goes on and on. I was taking those powders for years, guys. Synth the six, Optum Nutrition dies out the ass. It was making me shit diarrhea for literally two or three straight years and I had no idea what was going on, but anything for the gains, right? No, 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 no. We can't be eating protein powders that are going through us like crazy. Just because they're protein does not mean that they're going to be giving you the results that you want. So find a good grass-fed whey isolate or something that works well for you. Just avoid the dyes and avoid the gums as much as possible. The second phase of our journey is going to be coming as strong as an ox. Strength is our superpower. If we're extremely strong, we're going to be able to have a base that allows us to perform in absolutely everything. So you cannot neglect this. If you want to perform in endurance, having a strength base will be great. If you want to perform in CrossFit, having a strength base will be great. 
pretty much every sport, if you have a strength base, you are going to excel at a far greater rate than a lot of other people. In the early stages, I was squatting, benching, and deadlifting twice a week, and I was doing one session of heavy work and one session of volume work. I kept my sets around three to five sets for one to five reps, and I would stay in between the percentages of 80 to 100%. So on the five rep ranges, I would stay between 80 and 90%. And as I teeter towards lower numbers, I would get closer to 90 plus percent. And this is incredibly important to know, track, and monitor. Guys, I literally tracked absolutely every single lift I did for my entire lifting career. It started out with on a notebook, and now it's gone over to Google Sheets or Excel. But having that data is incredibly important for tracking progress because what gets measured gets improved. If you don't have that data to track, then you're going to get lost. You're going to not understand where you're going. You're not gonna be able to progressive overload every single week. You're not gonna know when to take a deload. So track, track, track. If you are struggling with this, then definitely go check out my Power Strong Volume 1 and my Power Strong Volume 2 programs. They are 12 week programs designed to make you strong, powerful and fast and put on lean muscle. Code Drew20 will get you 20% off and this is exactly what I did for my journey. And I've made mistakes in my journey too. I was also heavily focused on hitting PRs at an early age and that's not the answer and it's not sustainable. I was getting injured and I was facing a lot of plateaus. So what I would recommend for you guys is to take a deload every eight to 12 weeks and go for a PR every eight to 12 weeks because we wanna test ourselves, we wanna push our body we just don't wanna push it too far or we're causing soft tissue injuries or tweaks and pulls here and there. So test so we can drive the organism forward, but don't overdo it. Phase three is going to be power plus speed work. Once we do a ton of hypertrophy work and once we do a ton of strength work, our body's going to plateau because we're going to get used to that stimulus. And if you aren't willing to adapt to improve the organism, then you're going to have a severe, severe problem and pretty much stay the same for 20 to 30 years like so many people do. So don't let ego get involved and learn and adapt. And that's exactly what I did. Yes, it takes time because we all wanna lift big and heavy weights, but the big and heavy weights don't always get, to get you to where you wanna go. So I switched to power and speed work. And that doesn't mean I didn't do strength sets as well, but I would do less strength sets and more power and speed sets. So power on the force velocity curve is between 60 and 80% of your, of your one rep max, and speed is between 40 and 60% of your one rep max. And if you are lifting in these rep ranges after your strength sets, you are going to increase fast twitch muscle fibers, which is going to in turn allow you to move more force and allow you to be stronger. So it's going to help your CNS so you're not absolutely blasting your CNS every single day with a five by five or a four by four at 80 plus percent. But this is going to allow you to do one set of five, four or three at 80 plus percent followed by three sets at 40 to 80% of your one rep max. This is going to be listed right here so you can easily understand it. Once I started incorporating these methods, I busted through plateaus like crazy. I was really able to push my vertical up, my broad jump up, my fastball velo, my sprint speed, literally everything in terms of power on an echo bike, on a rower, my top end velocity, absolutely everything. And it made me feel so good not just crushing my soul with heavy sets every single day. In phase four is going to be doing plyometrics pre-training to activate our nervous system and to increase fast twitch muscle fibers. Plyometrics are so important for priming the body pre-lifts and it's going to get your nervous system ready to go. So just do three sets of three of plyo push-ups on upper body days or maybe some depth drop plyo push-ups and then on lower body days we can do seated broad jumps, broad jumps, vertical jumps, lateral jumps, we can also do med ball slams, side to side med ball slams, med ball shot put throws, etc. You guys get the gist, but this is exactly what you need to do in order to increase fast twitch muscle fibers and get your body activated. The moment I started doing this, I actually felt alert for my compound lifts instead of like jet lagged feeling. So get moving, get dynamic early in your session and you are going to feel incredible. Now that I've explained those four phases, let's get into an even more important part, which is recovery and mindset. So let's start with recovery. You might be asking yourself, Drew, but how do I recover from all that? I get tweaks, I get injuries, I don't feel that good on certain days, yada, yada, yada. How do I do it? So here's exactly how you're going to do it. You're gonna do five days of training a week. You're gonna do an upper body day, a lower body day, an upper body day, a lower body day, and an arms and sprint day. You are going to take two days off during the week so your body can recover. 
So right there, you're going to give yourself two days off a week, which is going to be plenty of recovery and rest. And then you're going to take a deload every eight to 12 weeks. And then in terms of recovery outside of the gym, you're going to follow the vertical diet. You're going to take creatine and electrolytes every single day. So creatine is going to help you maintain your power output and strength while putting on a ton of muscle. And the electrolytes are going to keep your muscles hydrated so you can perform a workout for a lot longer period of time. And now that nutrition and supplementation is taken care of, you need to focus on your sleep. This has been my absolute superpower, and I talk about it countless times on my TikTok, on my Instagram, on YouTube. I, I can't get enough of it, right? So create a system that works best for you. You're gonna sleep seven to eight hours a night. I track everything on the Whoop so I know exactly how many REM and deep levels I'm getting every single night. REM is rapid eye movement sleep, and deep sleep is slow wave sleep. We wanna to try to get around three and a half hours plus of those combined. And then if we are not getting those levels, that means we need to do something so we can recover at the rate we want to be able to perform in the gym. So pretty much what I like to do is not eat one to two hours prior to bed and you're gonna wind down as you go to sleep at night and you're not gonna have as much shit in your stomach. And once we get to bed, we're gonna sleep in a cold dark room with mouth tape on so we focus on breathing out of our nose, which will activate our parasympathetic nervous system so we can get into a deeper and more relaxed state. Pretty much what happens is you reduce cortisol levels and cortisol causes stress and if the cortisol levels are high in your brain, your brain's gonna be activated and you're not gonna get into as much of a deeper sleep. So just breathe out of your nose or tape your mouth. It's really not that hard. I use either Somnifix or Dream Recovery mouth tape and it works absolute wonders. And you can also use an eye mask as well. And then we're gonna wanna do 10 to 30 minutes of mobility every single day. And guys, you can do this while watching TV at night or just do it right when you wake up in the morning. Do some tissue work to your shoulders, your pecs, your legs, stuff that makes you feel good. And make sure to move your spine. We don't wanna become this stiff, immobile person that just walks around like this and can't move. No, we wanna be functional through our T-spine so we can get into deep ranges in a snatch, so we can get to, into ranges on a clean, so we can get into ranges on a jerk, so we can get into external layback on a throw, whatnot, so we can jump. We wanna do mobility all the time. Do 90 90 hip series, hangs, and cat cows. And then for some extra credit, we can also do the Mark Pro, which is electromuscular stimulation, and we can also do red light. And now for the most important and final piece, and that's going to be mindset. You need to have the most unstoppable, unbreakable mindset possible. People are going to doubt the literal fuck out of you. They're going to say, you can't do it. Are you serious? You can't do it. No, that's only meant for the people that are genetically gifted, genetically blessed. You're crazy to even think about that. And you're going to experience that every single day of your life. And you're gonna say, yeah, but I love being different. Being different's great. I embrace that. I wanna be weird. I wanna do things people, I wanna do things people aren't willing to do to get where I wanna go. And that's truly what you have to believe or it's going to eat you alive. Because this thing takes decades, unless you're a literal zero, 0.00001% physical specimen who's just given all God's gifts, but un that's unlikely to be you. And when people say you can't do it or they laugh at you, that cannot hold you back. That cannot deter you from getting to where you want to go. Right now, after pretty much my entire career trying to get into the mid 90s, I threw 95 miles an hour when I once threw 75 miles an hour. Everyone told me, Drew, you can't do it. You're a weak kid, you can't do it. There's no way, you're too small, you're too skinny. There's no way that you can throw 95 miles an hour. College coach after college coach after college coach after college coach said that. And then I got to the point where I was getting looked at by the Atlanta Braves. And it just came from literally not listening to absolutely anyone and just knowing so deep within me and knowing that my work ethic and my drive can get me to where I wanna go. And now I'm experiencing the same thing with me trying to get to the CrossFit Games. Oh, Drew, you can't do that. You can't do that. All right, bet, maybe I can, but watch me. I'm gonna give absolutely everything in the world to this so I can get where I wanna go. But that's a story for another day. And I think the biggest thing that I can give you is be okay being different. Be okay being the person that strives for massive goals, even when your buddy or your friends from work are going out and drinking and partying and doing all this shit. It's okay to stay inside, do research, go train, meal prep, do the stuff, it's okay. Embrace that weirdness. Be like, yeah, you know what? I feel unreal being different and not succumbing to that bullshit. Because that's, you're gonna get, you're gonna have plenty of times in your life where you're gonna be able to actually celebrate 
your true wins that you achieve. You don't want to celebrate bullshit wins and just kind of throw your life away, celebrate nothing, getting hammered, celebrate nothing. No, you're, you're gonna. It's gonna come a time where you might get drafted in the NFL. You might bring a, a company public. You might do some crazy stuff in MMA, and that's a, a thing that you can actually celebrate. Not this bullshit that you celebrate here and there. That's not really worth celebrating anyway. So be willing to be different. Be willing to go through the grind for years. Be willing to be super consistent and don't let anyone tell that you can't do something. Guys, that is the end of this video. I'm wrapping it up here. If you follow those four phases, you follow that recovery plan, you stick with that tough ass mindset that I know you have and know you can continue to grow, you are gonna be well on your way to achieving anything you want physically, mentally, in business, with anything you want in life. Just have an unbreakable mindset and know that no one can stop you. The only person that can stop you is you. If you finally decide to hang it up and say you can't do it no more and you quit, that's fine. But the only person that can stop you is you. And if you do feel like you've come to the end of the journey on one thing, that doesn't mean you stop pursuing excellence. You pivot. Baseball ended for me because I blew out my elbow. But you know, I'm like, I'm going to get to the CrossFit Games now because that journey don't stop. It keeps going in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, in your 60s, in your 70s, in your 80s, in your 90s, in your 100s. You keep building, you keep going. And I'm nowhere near where I want to be right now. But I'm documenting the journey because I want to be something just like you guys do. And this is exactly what I believe that you should do. And I want you to sift through this stuff, find what works best for you, and keep getting after it, keep killing it, and winning. I'll catch you guys in the next one. You mean the absolute world to me. Peace.